Hello everyone and welcome to my talk extending the IDP reference architecture. My name is Max Körbecher and I will talk a little bit about why we need to extend the all loft reference architecture for our platforms with a few other perspectives. So while we are living in the gold rush time of IDPs um, and IDPs are promised like the one solution for everything, right, to rule every process uh, which we know. It is very important that we also find the right way to build it and communicate it and bring it to the teams that they understand what is actually good for. And this is sometimes very difficult. Um, obviously, everything is also a little bit hyped at the moment in the platform area. Hello, PlatformCon. Um, but it's also an exciting time, right? Engineers love to build platforms. They love the complexity in it, in it, like a big Fisher Technique building box, where things actually are made for being sued together, but sometimes you just need to force a little bit of screw into or find another way to do something. And this is a fantastic time which we currently have to think about how we can better explain to end users, to also decision takers, what a platform is, how a platform is built, and also for us for documenting it, how we come to the next step and evolving into it. So what is a platform? What is an IDP? No worries, we don't go deep into that. We have enough talks facing it. But for me, platforms are usually made out of two major components, the technologies and the tools and the brain power which we have to build the platform, to put everything together and to make it in some way suitable for our situations we're in. But the reality is that often platforms, when we're building them and, and explaining to the people what they are doing, it's often not seen how many moving parts and components are actually inside. And this is um, yeah, challenging then to management, to understand, hey, what all of this thing is made of, why it has so high costs, why it takes so long to build, and why do we need it? What is our value for it? Right? Where does it come from that suddenly everyone wants to build it and it's in uh, big hype cycles, it's pointed out as one of the most strategic, important topics in the next years. But why? How? What does it do? What is the magic behind it? From our experience, most of the time, it's a problem of communication and documentation because it's difficult to show and highlight all the capabilities which a platform has and all the capabilities which it should have in the future. And it is also difficult to plan it accordingly and correctly. This is not because people forgot about how to do it, but because we are tackling with platforms and IDPs multiple problems actually at the same time. We summarize this up saying like, hey, the IDP is for developers made to make their life easier to deliver software, but it's not 100% the truth. It's also like incorporating other needs and demands on its way. That's why the importance is seen if someone understands it, but it's often, yeah, missing parts which we, we have difficulties to bring in as a communication. And we need to face this because we have multiple dimensions which we need to, uh, to display actually. It's not enough to just show one thing. And I have a background in enterprise architecture and I know people are annoyed of looking into different aspects, but they help to communicate to the target groups in a more specific way, in a more um, yeah, targeted way. The other part of a, such documentation is that edges, like the connectors in a diagram, can mean different things. And we should be more aware of it. We should be careful of it. And last but not least, especially in platforms where we have so many components which play together, we have software as a service, stuff which we run by ourselves, stuff which is run by another team, we have different target environments. Um, it's important that you have an interactiveness 
with such reference architecture that we can go, go and make a drill down and go step by step into other parts of the architecture. So this is the well-known, well-loved IDP reference architecture from platformengineering.org. And I loved this. When I saw it the first time, I was like, hey, that's what I searched for. Because finally, I can more yeah, discuss with, with customer and community about what do we all need, right? And we have everything in. We have on the right-hand side the resource plane. Um, we have backstage here on top in the service catalog. Um, we see that version control plays actually a big role, which is often underestimated in organizations, right? Um, we have overhauls, the ICD part, and then obs observability and security. Now, I had a problem with this. I was missing something. I was like, yes, this is what we all need for building an IDP, but where's the platform? When I think about a platform, I think about an oil rig, or I think about um, cars or trains, which also have like one platform on which everything is screwed on. Where's here the platform? I don't find it. And I was like, okay, fine. Then we need to extend it a little bit for what we actually search for. And this is the user land or the part which is running on top of the platform in a Kubernetes, most, most of the time in a Kubernetes, I have to say, it can be also open shift or whatsoever. And this was very helpful for us to extend this perspective when we had a discussion with one of our clients. Because here we could very good highlight that things which we have running in Kubernetes, like a security, for example, um, is partially just leveraging the capabilities which we have built somewhere else and pull it into the system. Right? So we're linking it up, um, taking Vault. Um, if you have set up Vault in Kubernetes, but you have also somewhere else the main cluster, linking this up. Um, yes, people were aware that it somewhere comes from, but it makes it more obvious. And then this one is for the user. Yeah? It's living in the wild west of the user space, or close by, and helps them. Also, it helps to understand that we have observability, namespaced observability for the user, but we also have observability, if we go back to the uh, platform picture, um, for the whole platform, for the infrastructure, for example. What's also important here for me is to highlight that we have user-based services like Daper for the integration for apps to different other target um, solutions like databases. And also this pinpoints back to what we see actually here in the overall reference architecture. But where from that perspective, we're missing a link. Nice, there's a MySQL written, but how and who use it? Yes, the software use it, which we run on top of our platform, but how do we get there? How do the people get the access to that tools? Is it stored in Grafana or somewhere else? So the important extension here is really to make people understand, hey, where does this all things come from and play together? Yeah. Also need to highlight, for example, the heavy babies. Um, which are tools, which are components that end users could deploy for sure, but maybe have also a problem in deploying it. Especially when we think you know, about machine learning workload, um, it's often a little bit more problematic. Uh, you need to know how you can utilize the GPU. The containers often needs a um, different security uh, configuration, so they cannot run out of the box in a hardened platform, and so on. And on the other hand side, we also need to help end users to, well, deal better with the application, not just huge deployments, that's it, but also to be more flexible to, to make it a little bit more moving living creature, where we can think about scheduling, for example, and, and event-driven scheduling. So this is all important because it's a starting point for the journey for the end user, to understand that this platform is not just a, yet another runtime as it is often treated. 
it's not just yet another runtime, people. It's there for helping you to be more dynamic, having a more stable environment, being more cloud native. This is what it's good for. So I mentioned already a lot of these points. Um, when we look into the user land architecture, we see that Kubernetes is an integrated, very important part. It helps with the standardization. And it helps us to understand which dependencies do we have for the application components. It helps to understand how and what we need to do with the networking. And it also helps to understand how and in, in which way we can use resources. GPUs is a good example because if the platform doesn't provide it and we also do not communicate it, no one ever knows how to use it. Right? Um, another nice and interesting case is in, in, in edge environments where you could have different interfaces for different controllers, for example. Um, for sure, you will build something which is targeted for this. And actually, the app should know that this is there. But I have learned better to communicate it in some way and document it in some way, rather than people are running around with question marks and do not understand what and why and where things are. And yeah, the on-app services, things which are close by to an application, very often needed, uh, and the heavy demand stuff um, also come by hand. Now, in addition to that, we need a perspective for the reference architecture that's highlighting more what a platform can do. Um, this is called a capability map. And um, I added here for the naming backslash n, backslash c, backslash p for namespace, clusters, and product. Um, because it might help to understand for one who has never used the platform what all is built into it. And even though platforms might have a good documentation somewhere, it's often from a perspective of like, I'm guiding you through that, right? Here's the best practice. There's how you can deploy it. This is how you get your secret and so on and so forth. But it's not very often showing all the capabilities at one place. Now, by such thing, it's important to make it interactive yeah, that you need to click on it. So build it in Confluence, for example and go step by step through um, all the relevant things which are uh, for the end user helpful in the integration. And the last step is actually an organizational perspective. And I don't mean the corporate organization. I mean, where does which component run? Because where is the platform living? What is the platform? As we have seen in the initial architecture, it's somewhat everywhere, but that's not the truth. Your Target platform might be Kubernetes running somewhere. Your main components can be databases and storage, um, can be running in a cloud provider or on-premise. Then you use some SaaS services. You have somewhere a hosted observability tool, or you have somewhere a hosted GitHub or GitLab. And then you have some stuff on the on-prem side, on your bare metal, uh, because whatsoever. You need to protect your data. Uh, you have their your container registries and so on. And bringing this boss together helps you to more and more understand how all of these different layers of the architecture place together. You really go from the overall um, picture, making understand from what a platform is built of to the user land, what their user can use to where and how I build something and where it's connected. And then all this boils down into actually um, this capability map. So this helps us to answer questions like, how does things belong together? And this is then these uh, connection lines, the edges, which I meant before. Uh, what does one can use? Looking into the user. Here's a lot of things you're able to do, just that you're aware of. Where does it run? What do I need for? How I need to open the communication? And yeah, what is uh, available on services? So. The takeaways for today for me are the user land is most underrated view. It's very technical view, which we usually see. The different perspectives matters in the value for the communication, but also help to understand the overall architecture so that you see the different perspective and like being able to connecting the dots. And then to adjust your architecture type um, is important for the communication with your audience. 
if you communicate to a business and they ask why it takes so long to implement something, it's helpful if you can tell like, look, this is all the features which we have built. And last but not least, you have to find out what the end users best understand when you communicate with them. I hope this layers helps you. I hope you can use it. And with that, thank you for your time. I wish you a great day and see you later.